Wow, Newcastle United are the richest club in the world. I can't even begin to get my head around that. Newcastle United are the richest club on the planet. It just seems like there's a catch. It's just, everything has changed just overnight. Everything has completely changed. Now I was here on Thursday when the news broke at St. James's Park and the energy you could cut with a knife, just that outpouring, that release of frustration was just an incredible thing to see. So what's gonna happen next? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk about my five reasons why I think everything is gonna change for us as supporters. But before that, I'm gonna talk about my brief thoughts on the actual takeover and what I think is gonna happen next in terms of the next manager. It's coming up. My name's Eddie, welcome to my channel Tyneside Life and I started making videos back in the beginning of February this year where I talked about different subjects that I'm interested in. It just gave me the opportunity to learn the trade, the YouTube trade if you like, on how to make videos and edit and put them all together and add music and sound effects and how to get comfortable on the camera. So it's been really quite a steep learning curve but I suppose that you could say that I actually launched my channel for real Tyneside life just two months ago when I decided to focus more on the football side and the West Ham match was my first one. So just a couple of months I've had nearly 400 subscribers and I'm absolutely overwhelmed with that. So firstly, thank you very much for subscribing to me and I'm overwhelmed with the messages that I've had from around the world and Malaysia and Indonesia and Nepal and Germany and, and Saudi Arabia. It's just been a fantastic experience and I've loved any, every minute of it. In addition to that, just March this year, I was diagnosed as being autistic, which I've obviously been all my life, but didn't know. And it's created some real difficulties, I can tell you. So if you're wondering what that ribbon is in the top corner, it's about autism awareness. Also, it's my birthday on Saturday the 16th, just before the Tottenham match, I'll be 55. So if you're around and you see us out and about, pop over and say hello. Back to the football in this takeover. I think I just want to get something out uh, the, for the very least for me personally, because uh, in the grand scheme of things, I don't know if this obscene amount of money ultimately will be good for Newcastle United or for English football in general. I, I'm sure there's a lot of good going to come out of this, but I appreciate that it's going to cause some, some difficulties as well. But on this journey, I fully intend to enjoy every minute of it. So in terms of the new ownership regime under Amanda Stavely, it seems apparent to me, and she's made no secret, that'll be some sort of five-year plan which will be broken down into phases. And as part of this strategic plan, she'll want to have dip different types of managers in and different types of players within those next five years where hopefully we'll be challenging for uh, the Premiership title. So it's really exciting that there's going to be a lot of investment in certainly the, um, the training facilities, the youth academy, kids football, upgrading the ground, uh, extending the Gallagher end possibly, and the investments that's going to be made into Newcastle United women's football. So all of those things are just going to take their natural course. But in terms of managers, he has, well, he has my thoughts on what I think might happen next. Of course, Amanda Stavely went to the training ground on Monday to have a meeting with Steve Bruce and the players. I think it's going to be announced on Friday or Saturday that Steve Bruce has been released. And I think she's done that, or I think she's going to do that um, out of a mark of respect for Steve Bruce to allow him to have some sort of dignity by allowing him to prepare the team for Sunday but not to manage the team on Sunday. I think that's going to be handed over to Graham Jones because from Sunday, we need a, a completely fresh energy, some new blood. If that's what's happened and it's gonna be announced on Friday and Saturday, I think you have to take your hat off to Amanda Stavely and it just, it just tells you what sort of um, owner, manager and person she is to allow Steve Bruce to do that. So I think, like I say, I think on Friday or Saturday, it'll be announced that Steve Bruce has been released and Graham Jones will take over for the match on Sunday. So here's my thoughts on what I think might happen in terms of the new manager, and it's just my opinion, uh, having looked at all the different options. And if we look at the likes of Steve Gerrard, Benitez and Brendan Rodgers, who are put in the same boat, I really can't see any of those three coming to Newcastle. They're tied into important contracts and they don't strike me as individuals. Well, I say that Brendan Rodgers, he reneged on the deal at Celtic, but I don't think he'll do it again. I could potentially see Brendan Rodgers here at Newcastle in a couple of years potentially but not at the minute so for those reasons I would 
for me, I would eliminate those three. Then we've got the likes of Conti and Mancini. And don't get us wrong, if, if Conti said, yeah, I'll take the job, I'll, I'll bite your hand off. I think it would be a great acquisition for Newcastle. I just can't see it happening. These types of elite managers, they want to be managing the best players in the world in European competitions. I don't think they've got the appetite to get embroiled in a, a survival battle. Uh, I could be wrong. I mean, money talks. Um, I hope I'm wrong, but I can't see it. Then we're going to look at um, the Eddie Howes and the Chris Hutons of this world, who to me are kind of mid-range, decent managers. I think Newcastle need to be aiming a little bit higher than that. Um, so for me, I'm going to eliminate Eddie Howe and Chris Hutton. I think there was talk of the Swiss manager, who I don't know, know a great deal about, but uh, by all accounts, I think he would probably be a, uh, do a decent job. But who do I think is going to come in? Um, and this isn't my, kind of my first choice of who I think the manager is for the long-term Newcastle, but who I think would is available. He's got the experience uh, and the, the knowledge and the respect of the, the, the footballing world, for me, it would be Frank Lampard. I think he would do a decent job. I think he would provide that new energy. Uh, I think he'd get us out of trouble, but uh, also with an option that if he did really well, that it could be an option to extend. So by default, um, my hunch is I think, I think we might be going for Frank Lampard and it would be quite timely as well because his first home game would be against Chelsea, who would I like to see as manager? I've got somebody in mind, I don't, obviously don't think he's available right now. You know, a caveat to what I was saying earlier about elite managers, I think Jose Mourinho would like to come here. Maybe he's not this season, but possibly next season. And I know for the past two or three clubs, he hasn't done very well and he's just struck me as a man who's a bit, getting a bit too big for his boots and he's a bit bored and a bit irritated. But I think he would relish in a new type of challenge. And I pick him because I think Mourinho has a soft spot for Newcastle United, obviously because of his links with Sir Bobby Robson. So I think for a couple of reasons, yeah, a challenge like this and rebuilding Newcastle would appeal to his vanity. But also, if he was the man to rebuild this club and get a trophy or two, it's a tip of the hat for Sir Bobby Robson, who, who he loves. So for me, short term, I think Frank Lampard. Long term, I think I'd like to see Mourinho here. But that's just my opinion, don't... <laughs> Don't shoot us down. For me, I'm just really chuffed to bits that we've got with hopes and dreams back that Mike Ashley sucked away. It's just, you know, I just want us to have the ability to compete. The trophies, you know, that's just the bonus, but that's not all of it for me. Just being able to compete with some of the best teams in the world is just an opportunity that I never thought I would see in my lifetime again. Anywho, back to the five things the five things that I think are going to change for us as supporters. And the first one is the psychological effect that just happened overnight. Gone is this, this mood of despair and frustration and anger and just which just rubs off and everything. It's been replaced by excitement and hope and dreams and optimism. It's just just the world seems a better place. Everybody's walking about town with you know, Newcastle shirts on and they're excited and they're smiling. And that can only have a positive impact on your professional life at work, but also in your, in your personal relationships as well. Everything changes. Yes, that means you're gonna be a better lover. The second thing that's gonna impact on us as supporters is your ability now to get to a game. Unless you've been lucky enough to get a season ticket, you're gonna find it really difficult to come to St. James's Park. I remember back in uh, 1992 when Sir John Hall bought the club and uh, he brought in Kevin Keegan to manage the team. There was just this wave of euphoria. It was like a, a tsunami, not a tsunami, a tsunami. And we just rode this crest of a wave for six or seven years. It was just an incredible time, but you couldn't get into the ground for love and money. And I think we're gonna experience something very similar from now on. I think that problem will be relieved a little bit when I, I do think they'll pick up the plans again to, to extend the Gallagher end because I think you can build another 8,000 seats in there so that will relieve some of that capacity pressure but I mean that, that could take two or three years to happen. So yeah, number two, it's going to be really hard to get into St James's Park. Number three, the atmosphere inside St James's Park is going to change. For years now, it's been a really difficult place to come and watch Newcastle. It's just been a swing in between being really quiet and frustrated to angry and even toxic. It's just, it's been embarrassing at times, you know, just listening to the away supporters sing their head off all game and just 48,000 or whatever Geordies just sitting there, just glum and just, and I understand that. There's just been just no hope and no dreams. It's just, it's, 
but all of that's just it's going to change now it's going to be like it was in 92 and 93 i kind of wait for sunday against tottenham it's just going to be absolutely amazing it'll be like a cup final and this is what it's going to be like at st james's park from now on the atmosphere is just going to be the the gallagher flags will be back the singing the chanting all around the stadium and the sort of atmosphere that gave newcastle united and its fans its reputation about this being a passionate football club and brilliant supporters number four Newcastle United is, is Newcastle United is now on the global map. Everybody is going to want to know about Newcastle United, and that's going to have a positive impact on regeneration in the area, uh, tourism and hospitality. People are going to be coming here, spending money in the pubs, in the clubs, in the shops, in the cafes, and that can only be good for local businesses and provide new opportunities. Uh, for new businesses and for employment in general. So number four, yeah, we're on the global map and this is great for the local area and its economy. Number five, you're gonna be skint from now on. If things weren't hard enough as it was financially, you're gonna be even more skint now because you're gonna be under so much pressure to buy replica, replica kit and training gear for your family, your kids for their birthday and Christmas. They're gonna be wanting to walk around in Newcastle shirts. Your partner's gonna be in utter despair when they see you walking around shopping with your Newcastle shirt on that you spend 65, 70 pound on, on your trip to Edinburgh or York and when you're on the Costa del Sol. Geordies now are gonna be turning up in their thousands to buy replica kit and you're gonna be skint. But you know what that means? It means we're proud to be Geordies again. Happy times. So there you have it. Let me know what you think, how it's gonna impact on your life in the comments below. So if you like this video and you wanna help support my channel, please consider subscribing, it really does help. And don't forget, if you're coming to the match on Sunday, come and look for us. I've got Tyneside Life in red on the back of my Newcastle shirt. And come and say hello. So until next time, why don't you check this video out and I'll catch you soon.